Is your grocery bill costing you a fortune and stressing you out? Well, in most cases, this can be expensive, but there are ways to make this a lot more affordable and for your buck to go further. Okay, I assume that you have watched part one of this mini-series on how to manage your personal finances, where we covered setting up of your income and expenditure statement, including the very first steps in reducing your expenses. Today, we now move on to the next step in reducing your deficit in your income and expenditure even further, by first tackling the grocery bill. And here, I'm going to be giving you at least 25 ways to help you start saving money from your very next trip to the grocery store. Plus, much more, coming up. <music> Greetings and welcome back to my channel. Tim here again with another how to with basics bringing you this time as you already know part two of our mini series of managing your personal finances now here i'm going to be giving you as promised 25 ways to help you save at the tills and reduce your expenditure as some people are having difficulty in doing this creating expenses is easy but reducing them is never so easy as I previously pointed out, there are some expenses or overheads that are a lot harder to reduce. And they are mostly the ones that you have under your expenditure category, bills, such as your rent and a few others. But don't worry, I will even be tackling those more difficult ones and giving you some options there as well. But that will be covered in my next video in part three of this mini series. The priority now is to get your income and expenditure into a state where you can have a surplus rather than a deficit. But you have to accept the fact that you're not a millionaire nor a financially wealthy person because if you were you wouldn't be here watching and listening to this video. So we have to be honest with ourselves and here we need to make one of three choices. Firstly, stay as we are and plod on living from paycheck to paycheck. Or two, get further into debt and risk losing everything. Or three, be positive, pick ourselves up and get out of debt. Okay, so I assume we are going to be taking the third choice. Great. Now, here are my two favorite sayings. We need to cut our cloth accordingly. And secondly, and forget having champagne taste when you're on beer money. Always try and cut a little more as every penny saved is another penny for that rainy day or for that leaner period when you're really going to need it. Now, when my kids were growing up and they asked me for something, my response was always the same and I want you to adopt this one. Do you want it or do you need it? If it is the former, then you obviously don't need it. So then don't buy it. I can tell you another one of my little stories, which I feel is very relevant to the subject. Now, when I finished school and first started working, that was in the mid uh, 70s, I saw an awesome Technics half arm music system with quadraphonic sound, bow speakers, etc, etc, which I must add, even in those days, cost a fortune. When I got home, I was so excited and I told my dad all about it and even showed him all the full color brochures. Dad agreed that it was the state of the art system and something that most people only dreamt about having. He went on to say, it's beautiful, but how? It's expensive. Can you afford it? I very quickly replied, yes, Dad, of course I can. I have some money in my savings account and the balance, well, I can pay that off very easily over 24 months. Dad looked at me, smiled and said, so you telling me that you don't have the money for it. So technically speaking, you can't 
afford it. Hence the punchline, I couldn't afford it. I've never forgotten those words and have adopted that philosophy throughout my entire life. It's all quite simple. If you can't afford something now, don't buy it. There are only two things in life that you should consider borrowing money for, and that is when you're buying a home and or buying a car. Everything else is a nice to have. So I suggest battle along with what you have till you can afford to pay for it in full. Remember, borrowing money is what puts the majority of people in debt. And of course, why living way above their living uh, means. Borrowed money with interest and fees can cost you anything up to double the original price. Now ask yourself this question, is that item now worth double the advertised price? Rather save what you are going to pay the bank or the lender and earn some interest on it. And once you have the full sum, then go and buy it. Secondly, as you are paying in full with hard cash, you could possibly negotiate even a better price. Think about it. Everything that I am telling you, I have not learned from some textbook or read up somewhere on the internet. Everything is what I was taught and all learned the hard way. Hence, these are my rules of success, which I live by. And why? Because they have never, ever failed me. Okay, let's now jump straight into the grocery shopping and talk about the 25 ways to save at the tills. I'm going to start by asking what sounds to be a very obvious question. Do you really look at the price labels on the shelf? If you do, how do you read the label on the shelf? It doesn't cease to amaze me that so many people don't know the correct answer. Allow me to tell you, because after what I'm going to show you and explain, you will save a considerable amount of money off your very next grocery bill. Now, here is a picture. What do we see? A supermarket shelf and two different size containers of exactly the same product and brand. And in this case, it's yogurt. The one is a 32 ounce pack at a retail price of $1.62. And the other is a six ounce pack at a very attractive price of only 72 cents. What does the average parent or person do if they have two kids? It's logical then to buy the smaller pack as each child has their own. Or maybe in the case of someone else, the thinking is it's convenient as you can simply take one out of the fridge at a time and have it as part of your daily diet. Now, that picture flashed up and was gone in a matter of seconds. And that is what the eye saw, when you're basically rushing around and under pressure, which is what most people see when they do their shopping. Okay, let's have another look at that picture, shall we? Remember, convenience always comes at a price. And here, you have just fallen for the oldest trick in the retailer's book of fools. Did you see that trick? Okay, now for those that didn't, let's look at the picture again and for a little bit longer. And this time I have zoomed in on something else on the label. Let's look at it. If you bought the smaller pack, you have immediately more than doubled your spend cost on average. If this is your way of shopping, you have at least increased your entire grocery bill by a minimum of 25%, if not more. Now, please stop looking at the retail price. I want you to only look at the smaller sized unit price on the label, as that price is the actual price you are paying per pound or kilogram, ounce or gram, quart or litre, or whatever. Hence, you will see in this example that the six ounce pack unit cost is 12 cents per ounce and the larger 32 ounce pack 
unit cost is only 5 cents per ounce, which is more than double the cost per ounce when comparing these two size packs. Now the same rule applies to every other product on the shelf. So even when comparing two different brands of product, I want you to look at the unit price and not the retail price. This can be from breakfast cereal to butter to meat, etc, etc. Now, another trick that the retailers do to catch you is that they normally put the more expensive product at our level for your convenience to find, but of course, not for your pocket. Don't look only at our level. I want you to look at the very top shelf and the very bottom shelf, as you'll probably find the same product in a different pack size or another brand at a much cheaper unit price. Hence, have you noticed when buying a pack of crisps, breakfast cereal, washing powder, etc., that the size of the packaging looks so big? But when you open it, often it's only three quarter full. This, once again, is another one of the tricks in fooling you to buy the more expensive product or a price inflated product. Now, I did mention in a previous video that I worked in the, in the packaging industry for a number of years. And the cost difference in different sizes of packaging is minimal. And pricing is all about the size of the production run. Secondly, when the packer or manufacturer is making, say, yogurt or washing powder, the unit cost is the same. And once again, it comes down to the size of the production run. So it isn't the extra packaging that's inflating the cost. It's about doubling their profit at your expense. You would say that this is theft and should be referred to the Consumer Council or Watchdog. Well, this is where you are wrong, as the law clearly states that the unit price was displayed and it was your choice to buy it. And secondly, they play the convenience card. Hopefully, you will now be a little wiser the next time. Okay, now let's move on to our 25 ways to save you money when grocery shopping. Firstly, shop on a full stomach. You'll buy less snacks and or other things that you don't usually buy, such as an assortment of unnecessary groceries. Secondly, think twice about buying gifts as all those other non-food items from grocery stores, often their prices are not necessarily the best as they're merely there for your convenience. Okay, thirdly, go prepared with a list and stick to it and only buy what is on the list. Nothing more and nothing less. Now, a good habit to get into, plus making your list a lot easier, is keep a notepad in the kitchen. And as you see something running low, that probably won't you see, see you through the following week, then jot that down on the list. And by doing this, ensures that you won't forget something that is needed. Fourthly, try and pre-plan your meals for the week before you shop and then buy once again only what's on the menu or the list. Start with planning say three or four days if the whole week seems a little bit too daunting. Fifth, shop only once a week. You tend to spend much more if you shop at the store every day or several times a week as this reduces the number of times that your impulse buying bug bug is triggered. Six, shop when you have the energy and aren't worn out from a busy day. It's easier to focus and make wiser choices when you've got energy and aren't, and aren't preoccupied and or rushed. Seven, return your bottles and or cans for the deposit that you may have paid. Now, this doesn't apply in every country, and if it does, and you have kids, then get them to help with this job and let them keep the cash that they earn from it. Eight, shop in familiar stores when you are tired, stressed or in a hurry. You'll find what you need and be able to get in and out the store 
with what you need quickly. Let's go on to nine. Plan some of your meals where you will, will have leftovers for lunch for the next day. Or freeze the leftovers for a quick meal for another day. Now I have previously touched on the subject of throwing food away, so think carefully about this option. 10. Package your own treats, juices and snacks. Now remember what I told you earlier about checking the unit price and not the retail price. Hence, consider the larger pack if cheaper. Make up your own individually wrapped treat packages to quickly grab on the run. 11. Buy less canned and packaged convenience foods and consider shredding, say, your own lettuce and or cheese. Cheeses often freeze very well. 12. Clean out your kitchen and cupboards once a month and use up what you bought before buying more. 13. Organize your food storage cupboards and drawers. If you don't know what you have you, and, and can't find what you bought, you'll end up buying more of the same things unnecessarily. 14. If you stock up, especially when a good deal is had, check the expiry dates when you buy and then package the food to preserve it for as long as needed. 15. If you buy large packages of meat, pre-cook or marinate it and then freeze it to speed up your meal times. If you know that you've got food already at home, it's less tempting to eat out. 16. Spend some time once a week cutting up fruit and vegetables. This will also help speed up your meal preparations and also provide some healthy snacks that are ready to go. 17. Don't buy snacks on the run. They are often less healthy and way more expensive. 18. Get creative and try out new, new foods. You may find less expensive food that you may just enjoy. Plus, you'll give yourself a change or a choice of a larger selection of meals. 19. Shop with a calculator and add things up as you put them into your cart or your trolley. If you're shopping with kids, then give them the job to tally up what you've put into the trolley. It will help you then stick to your spending plan or your weekly budget. 20. Learn how to cook or bake. Hit up maybe a family member or a friend for help or even try googling it. As cooking and baking your own is a lot more healthier and cheaper. 21. Consider buying non-food grocery items like detergents or garbage bags etc. at a discount store as often they are a lot cheaper there. 22. Buy what you need and can afford. Buying a 3 for 2 or a 3 for 1 only becomes a good deal if you can use all three. Once again, some of those items can be frozen. 23. Price check and shop around for discounts on items you buy regularly. Use store and manufacture, manufacture coupons when you can and only when you need that item. Do not buy for the sake of buying. In saying that, often the trip could cost you more than your savings, so do it only if it's en route. 24. Remember that smaller size packs can sometimes be a good deal, but in most cases they are a lot more expensive. So do the maths, either on your phone or with your calculator, checking the unit price per ounce or per gram, etc. That is, if of course it's not included on the shelf label. 25. Don't overlook no name or store brands. Most of these products are made by the same brand name companies 
and are run on the same production line. They just put a different label on it. Now, I know this to be a fact. As I've told you before, I've worked in the packaging industry for a number of years. And here is an extra few pointers for luck. If some item is on sale, it only becomes a good buy if you need it and will use it. And lastly, every time you throw food away, be it leftovers on the plate, think twice about it, as each time that you do that, you're actually throwing your hard-earned money into the bin. Think about it. If this is happening every day, you're overcooking. So, so tomorrow, try and cook that little bit less or revert to my previous suggestion with respect to leftovers. This is all your money that you're wasting, which is contributing to your cash shortages come month end. Okay, now getting back to that deficit in your income and expenditure statement. I want you to start off by targeting all the luxuries or non-essentials, such as, and I know I'm going to be blasted here <laughs> by a couple of you. If you smoke, then make an effort to smoke one or two cigarettes less a day. And that will give you the result of saving the cost of half a packet of cigarettes per week. And or your partner smokes, you can both do this, thus saving the cost of at least one packet per week. Alternatively, whatever your monthly spend is per week on cigarettes, minus the price of, say, that one packet, then put that money aside in, say, a cookie jar or pre-bar your week supply of cigarettes. But here, you need to be disciplined and stick to it by only smoking what you bought. You have now reduced your spend by the cost of one packet per week. Remember, every penny adds up. The next item, if you drink alcohol, is do exactly the same as per the smoking example. And you have then immediately cut the cost of two very expensive items down. All right, let's now move on to other saving tips to help you reduce your weekly or monthly expenditure even further. Let's touch on electricity. Why leave every light on in your home? Only switch those on that you need and turn the others off. As they say, the meter outside is ticking up, increasing your bill. <laughs> Did you know that Queen Elizabeth is known for walking around the palace switching off lights? Well, if she can do it, so can you. Then let's look at your car, petrol, diesel or gas spend per week. Analyze every trip that you make and ask yourself, if that trip was necessary. You know, I see people getting into their cars and making numerous trips into the village every day. Rethink your trips and create a planned circular trip, such as do what you can after dropping the kids off at school and or what you weren't able to achieve, do it en route again when going out to fetch your kids in the afternoon. This way, you will reduce your fuel costs plus unnecessary extra wear and tear on your car. Think about it. Why make extra trips when you can simply plan and think ahead of what you are going to be doing? I appreciate that all of this is not going to be easy, especially in the beginning, as you have to reverse those old bad habits that you have created over your entire life. After all, were you ever taught these things in school or even by your parents? None of this is some conspiracy theory. The system as we know it has been designed to make you work till you drop or for you to remain in debt, ensuring that you leave little to nothing to your children as after all, the system wants your kids to follow in the same footsteps as you, of living in debt. And that being the reason why they don't teach you any of these things in school. I may eventually do a video on the banking institutions and how they've all been designed for one purpose, and that is to enslave you 
to them and not for your gain nor reward. You are not their customer. You are their slave. And that is another story for another day. This now brings us to the end of today's video, which I hope has given you a lot of food for thought and has helped you to not only start thinking differently, but will start to make some difference to your bottom line and reduce that deficit a little bit more. Now, in my next video, which is part three, we're going to be tackling putting a budget together to assist you further in planning your finances and getting you into a savings growth position. Thanks for watching. I do hope that you've learned something new here today. And if so, please leave a comment below as your feedback is important in improving the overall quality of material being presented. Now, if you know somebody that could benefit from this video, then please share it with them as your help and support is really appreciated. Now, please also don't forget to click the thumbs up, like button below, subscribe, hit the bell if you haven't already done so, and I'll see you next time with another How To With Basics video. Bye.